following the service as it's printed in your bulletin. Oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes. He will judge the world in righteousness. And the people Grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. I was joking with one of my daughters this year, asking her what she wanted for Christmas, because after all, Christmas was all about getting what you wanted. It is not, she said. Really, isn't that how we treat it? We ask for lists from people detailing the things they want. A lot of times we spend more than we ought to getting them just that right gift that we know they really want. And if we get a gift that isn't really something we want, we'll smile, we'll act as if we're excited about it, but something deep down inside us is disappointed. Now, sadly, that's what Christmas has become. But don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not saying that gifts being given on Christmas is itself bad. It's not the gifts that are the problem. It's the obsession with satisfying our wants. Gift giving can actually point to something good on Christmas. It can point to the gifts that God gave us on Christmas. The gift that God gave on Christmas had absolutely nothing to do with what the world wanted.
because as time would bear out, the world actually didn't want what God had to give at all. God gave his son gift wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. Angels appeared in the night sky announcing God's gift. Shepherds and wise men traveled great distances to see this gift that God had given. So there was an excitement in the world about God's gift at first. But then like the toys we used to get as kids that would be all exciting and played with for the first month or two and then thrown in a corner, something actually happened like this with God's gift. Actually, it was worse than just that. The world that started off excited at Christ's birth wound up totally rejecting God's gift. And to get rid of him, they actually murdered him. They turned on Jesus because he wasn't the gift they wanted at all. They were looking for something that gave them a boost in this life. They wanted security, happiness, freedom from the things in life that pushed them down. Actually, what the people back then wanted is pretty much the same thing I think we today all want. We want to be able to pursue what we want without somebody standing over us telling us it's wrong. We want to be our own people, do our own thing, not feel guilty for doing it. And I think that's pretty much all we're looking for. We're not really extravagant people at all. Just let me do what I want to do. Let me find my own way, put a little money in my pocket, a smile on my face, and I'm good to go. Unfortunately, our wants, and the wants of the people back in Jesus' day, are the kind of wants that can lead us straight to hell. God's gift to us was an answer to needs, not wants. Our wants can be guided by selfishness and greed and pride. Think of how much hurt we have caused to those around us and even to God himself because of our pursuing what we wanted. But God loves us enough not to give us what we want. God's gift to us was an answer to what we need, not what we want. And what we need is somebody who can make our lives right with God. Somebody who can erase from his memory our crimes and our disobedience. We need a Savior strong enough to stand up against the devil's worst attacks and compassionate enough to know exactly what our weaknesses are. So God sent his Son to be that Savior. Jesus was born as a weak, helpless baby in the normal way all babies are born so he could know our humanity. He was born to a poor couple so that he could understand the pains of poverty. He was rejected and he was abandoned by those he loved so he could know what it's like for us when those we love betray us and abandon us. We have a Savior who understood all of our pains and troubles because he endured them himself. That baby born in Bethlehem's manger is there to answer all our needs. He carried our human need in his own flesh and he lived the life before God the Father that God wanted all of us to live but that we didn't. He lived without sin and without failing. And more than live in our place, this Savior died in our place. He went to the cross with the full weight of our humanity's disobedience and sin, and he died there with all that on his shoulder. Every drop of holy blood he shed was payment for us, for our sins so we could be spared God's wrath and judgment because that is what we deserved and he is what we need. Now, we can't save ourselves. We cannot hope to earn God's approval by living good enough lives. We need a savior. One to live for us, one to die for us, one to save us from death and sin. 
So God sent his son, born to be that savior we need. And in fact, because he did all of the things our souls need for eternal life, we really don't need anything else in this life. He is the fullness of all things we could hope for. Tonight, as we remember God's gift of his son, we do give thanks to him for loving us enough to let Jesus be the one to satisfy our needs and for saving us. Thanks be to Jesus. when we look at how focused our world is on presents. For many people, that's all that matters on this night. Children tear open wrapping paper to see what they get and are disappointed when they don't get exactly what they want. People who can't afford to spend much money spend too much and then struggle to pay the bills. Our world focuses too much on presents and material things. But presents themselves are not bad. In fact, tonight as Christians, we remember that God himself gave us presents at Christmas. His gifts, his presents were not shiny new things for us to play with, but gifts that would bring us eternal life. And it came to pass in those days that the, that the Caesar Augustus should be re registered. This census first took place while Canarius was governing Syria. 
So all want to be reg so all went to be registered everyone to his own city. Joseph also want went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary his betrothed wife who was with child so it was that while they were there the days were completed for her to be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swallowing cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. strange gift this was. It's not a toy and not a game. It wasn't something to put on a shelf and look at, but it was a baby born to a poor family in a stable on the edge of town called Bethlehem. This was a gift that was promised long ago. 700 years before Jesus' birth, God told his people through Isaiah the prophet, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The baby was God with us, God in the form of flesh and blood, God who came to us in the form of weakness. 
This baby was a gift to show the world what the heart of God was really like. You got your gift is Jesus. Give us faith to trust in him. Thank you for your word of promise. You will save us from our sins. grow to give us gifts. He will give gifts to all people the same as the shepherds learned to attending to their sheep that night. Now there in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angels said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. For there was born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus was born to be the Savior of all people. The gift he came to give was salvation. But what did we need saving from? An angel gave Joseph the answer to that. When Mary was found to be with child, Joseph did not know it was God who had made Mary pregnant. He didn't know if he should still take Mary as his wife. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid 
to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. And you will bring forth the Son, for you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus came to save us from our sin. He, um, God, um, yeah, sorry. Jesus came to save us from our sins. It's the best gift we could get. God will not punish us for, for breaking his word. He will not keep us of all the bad things we've done. Jesus has saved us by winning our forgiveness. Our salvation came at the price of Jesus' life. This gift comes wrapped in a red box to remind us of the blood of God's Son that was shed for us. Throughout the church year, at different times, we will see red cloths on the altar. It always reminds us that our salvation required the shedding of God's blood on the cross. As Isaiah prophesied, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. This birth. Because we would be saved. God came down to live on earth. On the cross, his life we gave and rescued us from death and grave. shepherds and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard and wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. 
And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Where cattle and donkey and woolly sheep lay the sweet, bee, lay the sweet baby Jesus was born Christmas Day. The shepherds knew Bethlehem saw a bright light while keeping the sheep on that wonderful night. The shepherds came quickly with hearts full of joy and kneeled to worship the heavenly boy. They glorified God for his grace and for his favor, for sending his son to become the world's savior. Savior. because Jesus was born to give them new life, eternal life. It was a life that didn't have to wait to, it was a life that didn't have to wait to enjoy till they got to heaven. They could live in that new life right away. Their lives would not know a joy or not know fear anymore. God wasn't angry at them. He wouldn't judge them harshly. Their li the, uh, their lives would know a joy unlike any other. God the Father loved them enough to send his son into this world. He cared about them even though they were poor common shepherds. Their lives would never be the same.
Green is a color that reminds us of life. When Jesus died on his cross, new life was given to us. This life does not depend on having money or things. It depends only on the love of God that is our guarantee in Christ Jesus. Everything else can be taken from us, but as long as we have life in Christ's grace and mercy, we have everything. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and his life is in his Son. He who has the Son of God does have life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things that I have written to you in the name of the Son of God, that you may have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. gifts of life and grace are not meant for a select few people or those who have erred and fallen in sin. God wants to give his gifts to everyone throughout the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The color purple is the color of royalty. It is worn by kings and was worn by Jesus when he was crucified. Tonight the color reminds us that Jesus is the king of the whole world and everyone and everything on it. He does not rule us with power, but with grace, which he seals to his people in holy baptism. This was God's plan all along. He sent his son to change the lives of the worst sinners and change enemies into children whom he could love and who would love him. His salvation is for all who hear his words of life, repent of the sins in which they are trapped, and live the lives of grace that he gives. This is a promise to us all. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life.
my prayer. O oh God, you make this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.